So actually, in this talk, I just want to consider the symmetric setting. So we have two parties, and they share some secret key, and they run some protocol, some cryptographic protocol. And yeah, there are many settings where leakage is really an issue, like where there's some side channels, for example, the smart card or RFID setting. So an adversary, like even though the protocol might be secure, there might be some side channels, and the adversary learns some partition or like some partial information about the secret key. So this is like really an issue if like the adversary can do that during many sessions, or even if he just learns a small amount, like in total, he can learn like to recover the secret key. So there's uh, an approach to provide security in such a setting, and it's called like fresh rekeying. So the idea is basically that we just use the secret key to generate some session keys. And then we use the session keys to um, perform the protocol. And in such a setting, that adversary would, like if it just targets the protocol, it would just learn some partial information about the secret keys, uh, the session keys. And this is not so harmful, because if, when they're computationally independent, then an adversary cannot take advantage of for future sessions, even if he had like, learned of lots of information. But of course, this is not like, sufficient for security because like, a clever adversary would just simply target the, re or the rekeying scheme. So we need like, some kind of a leakage resilient rekeying scheme. Um, there have been some proposals, but unfortunately, they were also like, vulnerable to some attacks. And so our contribution in our paper, we basically just first give a formal security definition, and we also give a formal security proof in a certain leakage model. And the constructions are basically hired on, based on LWE and LPN. So we have two constructions, one on LWE and one on LPN. And it shows that it, the scheme is like really efficient. So we have like a certain leakage model, and this, in this leakage model, like you usually share the secret key, and it's like also correspond to a countermeasure which is called masking. And you can basically determine the hardness for an adversary to attack such a scheme by the amount of shares. And our solution just grow, like the complexity in our solution just grows linearly in the amount of shares. While like for for block ciphers, for example, this grows quadratically, like and that's very like a very an approach to to provide security that is also used in practice, like it's like a really practical thing. Um, and therefore, we have also provided a concrete implementation for the scheme, and it shows that even for low orders or like for low amount of shares, um, we match the efficiency of AES, like of mask AES. And since it's like asymptotically more efficient, we of course like we have a better efficiency for higher orders. So the nice thing is also that we have like security against so-called glitches for free, which was not the case for the implementations that we for the AES implementations that we comp used for the comparison. But if you want to have some implementations for AES which are secure against glitches, then you have like a much more like much higher computational overhead, so it's several ma magnitudes less efficient in our solution. Basically, we have two schemes. So the first one is called um, based on offset LWR, so it's like somewhat a new um, assumption, but actually it behaves somewhat like LWR, and we can show that it's basically at least as hard as LWE with uniform noise. So also it uses like very simple, a very simple rounding function and very efficient um, operations and also simple operations, so it will be very, but it's very easy to implement. And it's also very efficient. So then we have a second scheme, which is based on hardware noise. So in this setting, so we can only provide security if we assume that there is a certain hardware noise. Usually, if someone performs a side channel attacks, at, attack, then the values that he learns is always perturbed by some noise, and we exploit that in that approach. So we also introduce a new learning problem, which is like quite specific to, to the setting, and we call it learned, uh, learning parity with leakage. And we can show that this learning parity with leakage is um, more or less equivalent to LPN. 
or basically it's equivalent to a variant of LPN, but we can reduce LPN to this variant. So and this also operates on set two and has also really simple operations and it's also very simple to implement. So now I want to define a rekeying scheme. So it's actually quite simple. So first, we, what we need, we have first a generator algorithm. So this generator algorithm just generates a secret key. And then we have some generator algorithm for the session keys. So this generator algorithm, uh, algorithm operates on some secret shares of the secret key. Because, and we in particular assume that only one party is subject to leakage, like, which is usually the case if we have like the smart card setting um, because the server won't be like, like uh, subject to leakage attacks or side channel attacks. So and then we also need like a third algorithm, um, which we call core SK. So there might be some, so it will also create a session secret key, but for the other party. So there might be some inconsistency. Therefore, we also need some correction information V, and we also have some randomness R that the core SK needs as input, and then basically for correctness we require that both algorithms output the same session key. So for the security, we consider like the real world, basically there's an adversary who has like some side channel or receives some leakage from the party, but he also receives the randomness and the correction information, but also the session key. And we say it's secure if the adversary cannot distinguish this real world setting from an ideal setting. In the ideal setting, the session key is uniformly random and the leakage comes just from some simulator and the simulator just uses as input the randomness to uniformly random correction information and secret key. So if an adversary cannot distinguish these two, these two settings, then he can also not profit from the leakage and he can also not distinguish the, se the session keys from uniformly random secret keys. So this is sufficient for, for the security. So now I want to speak about the leakage model. So we assume a certain leakage model, which is called the T-probing model. And the idea is that an adversary can request like any T value, like intermediate values, um, and l learn them. But basically, like if when the blue party executes this gen, SK algorithm, and the adversary can request like any T values that occur during the computation. So then of course he could like simply try to learn all the shares of the, of the mask or like of the, of the secret. Um, and to prevent that, that he learns them um, during set or like more than one session, uh, we need some kind of a refreshing algorithm. So after each, um, session, we simply need to refresh the shares. And there are several proposals for such a refreshing algorithm. And basically, if we use D shares, which has to be more than two times the amount of values that an adversary can retrieve, um, then we can provide, or then we can get this secure refreshing. So and yeah, basically, if we just need that this Chen SK algorithm refresh the, these shares like during each session. So now I want to show you the schemes, like first the one based on offset LWR. So we use some two moduli, like P and Q, and then we also have like some really easy rounding function which just drops the least significant bits. And then the generator algorithm is really simple. We just draw a secret key which is in uniformly random and set uh, Q to the N. We just use a very simple secret sharing scheme. Then for the Chen SK, um, the idea is basically that we compute some shares of a session secret key, SK, SKA, uh, I, which is just R times KI, and then we use apply the rounding function. And then to obtain the session secret, uh, the session secret key, um, we just compute the sum over all the shares, shares of the secret key, uh, of the session key. So then, the second algorithm basically computes something related or it doesn't operate on the shares but directly on the, on the secret key. So it just computes R times the secret key and then rounds. And because the rounding function is almost linear, 
both operations are somewhat close and like we just need a very simple error correction information to provide like equivalence. So I won't show that here, but it's quite simple. But for simplicity, I did not sketch it because it's a bit technical. So for the security, um, first I want to show you that the offset LWR is quite similar to normal LWR. So basically it's about distinguishing a uniformly random R matrix R and uh, basically the value B, which is in a set P to the M. Um, basically this value B is either uniformly random or it's just a rounded value or, or it just rounds the value R times K plus some offset O. So, so for LWE, we simply don't have this offset O. Um, for LWR, we don't have this um, offset O. And for LWE, it's actually quite easy to show that offset LWE is the same as LWE, but for LWR, we cannot do this um, because the rounding function is not linear. But actually, it, we show also that many of the reductions that we use to um, prove the hardness of LWR also work for this offset LWR. So it's no problem, so we don't really decrease the security even though we cannot relate directly to LWR. You have to use this additional assumption. So yeah, and for suitable parameters, yeah, it's at least as hard as LWE with uniform noise. So for the proof sketch, it's actually quite easy. So we have some adversary, you can learn like T values and the reduction will have access to some offset LWR oracle. You can request some offset and then receive some, some sample R and B, which is either uniform or this R times K plus O rounded. And now this reduction simply has to somehow simulate this Chen SK algorithm. So since the adversary can only learn T values and there will be much more shares, there's at least one share that the adversary cannot learn. And so we call this share the uh, KJ. So now the reduction can basically simply sample all the shares, but only the KJ share. It won't, or like the reduction won't know the K uh, J share. Mm. But it will be quite easy to generate, generate the corresponding um, um, session secret share. Because we can simply, simply sum over all the ki, so we compute this value k prime. So in this k value k prime will simply correspond to minus k plus kj. So we can simply request this value k prime to the offset LWR oracle. So and what we will receive is either a truly uniform B or we will receive the corresponding um, session secret share. So we can use this bit B now in the simulation of the algorithm Chen SK. And we can simply sum over all these session secret shares. And now, so we can simply output this session um, key. And now in the case when B is uniform, the session key will be uniform. In the other case, when it's like L, um, offset LWR distributed, then it will be exactly as in the scheme, exactly as in the real world. And so that's the reason why it's secure. Yeah. So for the, the other scheme, we basically use hardware noise. So usually these side channel attacks are affected by hardware noise. In our model, like in this probing model, we assume that you cannot let the adversary read, doesn't learn A in the clear. But usually there's some large Gaussian noise, which is like, so the adversary will learn something like the value plus E, which is like a real value. So it actually depends on the measure, how the adversary measures this real value, what he will learn, but, yeah, but we model it in this way. And, um, and if we assume that this, this, this probe is just, for example, an inner product of some public value R and some key K, then we can show that this is actually equivalent, this problem of learning or recovering the secret key um, is equivalent to learning parity with noise. So, um, and we really exploit that to, to um, construct a rekeying scheme. So basically the rekeying scheme will be as hard as LPN. 
based on this learned, learning parity with leakage, with, which is equivalent to learning parity with noise. The nice thing about it is that we don't need to generate the noise on the chip because usually like there were some proposals um, which wanted to provide some side channel um, or like leakage resilient schemes based on LPN, but there was always the issue if you generate the noise on your chip, then the adversary might learn this noise. But in our scheme, there's no noise generated on the chip itself. We just need that the side channels are affected by some noise to, during the side, side channel measurements. Um, yeah, so, but for the security, there is like a drawback because it seems that we need the ideal cipher model or at least a, or like a random oracle model because on the chip itself, we don't have this noise. So the session keys won't be uniform or won't be um, indistinguishable from uniform itself, only if the adversary takes the side channel attack. So, so like as an input for the protocol, we first need to hash it, for example, with a random oracle. So yeah, that was also my last slide. So, so basically, um, we have now like a formal security definition for uh, these three keying schemes. We also have like a formal proof of these schemes. So they give like an, an high, um, oh yeah. So we can quite sure that there is not like a trivial attack compared to, or like some attack compared to the previous schemes. Um, as well, we have like, we base it on well-established assumptions, for example, on LPN or LWE. And it's also very efficient to implement and, um, and very simple. So like if you have like some programmers who do not have like any knowledge in cryptography, it will be still very simple for him to implement that. While like, similar, like comparable block cipher based solutions will be quite hard to implement because this, this masking is highly non-trivial because there you have like nonlinear operations, while in our case we use like LWR and LPN, which are like really or like almost linear, which makes the whole implementation really efficient and very simple. So yeah, thanks for your attention, and I also have the reference for ePrint, and I'm happy to discuss. Yeah, thanks.